In the wake of Anthony Joshua's devastating second round knockout victory over Francis Ngannou, the obvious question to ask is, who does AJ fight next? Because ostensibly, Usyk and Fury are going to be tied up fighting each other this year, so AJ is unlikely to get a title shot until at least the back end of this year or maybe next year, in which case, what's he going to do? Sit on his hands for 12 months? Or is he going to stay active and build on this success he's had recently, keep the momentum going, etc.? Most people would advise the latter because when you eventually do get a chance to fight for the heavyweight title again, you want to be at your absolute best. You don't want to be rusty. Now, you could stay busy by fighting lower tier opponents who are not too dangerous, but just allow you to keep your tools sharp, or you could challenge yourself. We'll see what Anthony Joshua decides to do, but if he fought an Andy Ruiz, that potentially could be a challenge because yes, he did beat Ruiz in the rematch comfortably on the cards, but that was by moving around and staying out the way. Would he be able to be more stationary against Ruiz and get the win? Now, Ruiz himself has had some challenges in his career, been extremely inactive, and that's terrible for him, but still there's potential danger there. And where is Ruiz in the rankings right now. What does AJ gain from fighting Ruiz at this point? Some people want to see the trilogy. Some people think it's pointless at this stage and there's no real need for it right now. Let me know what you think in the comments. With Joseph Parker, Parker is very credible because of the recent wins. He is a former world heavyweight champion. He himself has a win over Andy Ruiz back in the days. He's come back very well from being stopped by Joe Joyce. And he's still relatively young, Joseph Parker. I think he's only about 32. So that would be a perfectly credible opponent for Anthony Joshua. A rematch, of course. The main reason that Parker wouldn't be my pick for Anthony Joshua's next fight is because their first fight was so boring. That was probably the most boring fight of Anthony Joshua's whole career, was against Joseph Parker. And credit to Parker for winning his last two fights against tough opposition, but his last two fights were boring as well. You can't tell me that Parker versus Wilder was the thrill in Manila, <laughs> and you can't tell me that Parker versus Zhang was entertaining either. Both fights were boring. So, would we really get a great fight between AJ and Parker? Who knows? But uh, from a ranking perspective, it makes sense for AJ because Joseph Parker is the inter interim WBO champion now. So if AJ were to beat him, he would take that place and be in line for a mandatory shot against the winner of Usyk Fury, assuming that fight goes ahead. You've also got Philip Pergovic out there. He is IBF mandatory. Similar situation for AJ. If AJ beats him, he becomes IBF mandatory. And that mandatory, I'm assuming, is going to be called sooner than the WBO mandatory, which AJ would get if he beat Parker. So in that sense, it makes more sense to fight Philip Pergovic because the IBF tend to expedite their mandatories more quickly than the other sanctioned bodies. Plus, Pergovic is next in line right now anyway because Usyk just defended against the WBO mandatory and Daniel Dubois. So some would say it actually makes more sense to go for Philip Pergovic. And personally, I think that's the fight he should go for. I think that's the fight that really needs to happen in order to satisfy me as a boxing fan that Anthony Joshua deserves the title shot. Because there are lots of fighters out there who have been fighting better opposition than Francis Ngannou and Otto Wallen. And they haven't got their title shots yet. So for Anthony Joshua to just leapfrog everybody off the back of a win over a novice doesn't really sit right with me. At the end of the day, if one of the champions decided to uh, have a voluntary defense, cool. In normal circumstances, fighting AJ in a voluntary defense is okay. But not when you've got mandatories who have been in their position for ages and their shots are actually long overdue now. So I'd feel better about AJ getting a shot at the winner of Usyk Fury if he actually fights a Filip Pergovic, defeats him, and earns the spot, earns the right to fight for the Undisputed Championship or whichever belt, or belts, should I say, that the number one heavyweight has at that point because, you know, people can get stripped of belts not long after becoming undisputed. Maybe AJ fights Hergovic for a vacant belt. We've talked about that before in the past. So yeah, out of all the names out there, I think Hergovic makes the most sense from a ranking perspective, from a stylistic perspective, if Fury is the champion especially because Hergovic and Fury are somewhat similar in terms of height and reach. Well, Fury's got quite a bit of longer reach than Hergovic, but at least in height, they're a similar size, and Joshua could maybe practice the tactics 
that he would use for a Tyson Fury fight on Philip Hergovich. Now, some people are still interested in the Wilder fight. They'd like to see Anthony Joshua fight Deontay Wilder next. But personally, for the same reasons that I'd feel a bit funny about AJ getting a shot at the winner of Usyk Fury in his next fight, I'd also feel a bit funny about Deontay Wilder getting a fight with Anthony Joshua in his next fight. Because Deontay Wilder not only is coming off a terrible, horrendous performance against Joseph Parker, an absolute stinker of a performance in a stinker of a fight, but when Deontay Wilder was champion, when he was in a position of power and privilege, he abused his position. He milked that WBC belt against poor opposition for the most part for years and years and years, other than when he fought Tyson Fury, of course, and lost. And so I always said that, I like Deontay Wilder as a fighter, as a character he is uh, questionable, right? But as a fighter, I always enjoy watching him, he's very exciting. But I said that I hope he doesn't get preferential treatment as a contender. I'd like to see him fight his way back up the rankings and earn his title shot. If he does that, no problem whatsoever with him fighting for a world title again. It would not sit right with me to see Deontay Wilder fight Anthony Joshua ahead of Hergovic fighting Joshua, or Parker fighting Joshua, or Frank Sanchez fighting Joshua, etc., etc. Wilder's actually been dropped out of some of the rankings with certain sanctioning bodies, and rightfully so because of inactivity. And when he did come back against Parker, he was awful. So yeah, long story short, I think AJ should fight Hergovic next. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.